I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to continue discussing certain um, less trivial, I would say, problems related to uh, sequences and series. Um, I think I have two problems to discuss today. Yes, so let me just start with the first one. Um, obviously, I do expect everybody who listens to this lecture first try to do these problems just by yourself. Uh, then listen to the lecture and then try to do it yourself again uh, just to be able to, you know, to remember it better. All right, so um, find the quotient of a geometric regression if each of its elements starting from the second equals the difference between its two immediate neighbors. All right, so um, you have to find a quotient of a geometric progression which has certain property. Now, the property is that if you have geometric progression like this, this is member number m, nth term of this sequence. Now, um, you have to find out what's the quotient Q if there is a certain property which they satisfy. Namely, every member, every term of this sequence is equal to a difference between the next one and the previous one. But let's think about, if we know the formula for uh, any term, any element of uh, geometric sequence, and this is the number nth um, term, then we can basically have an equation that the nth um, term of the sequence is equal to n plus first, the next one, which is obviously this one, one greater than this, and minus the previous one. This is one less power is less than than this one. So this is immediately following member after this one, and this is immediately preceding. So basically we have an equation from which we have to find Q. Well, um, obviously from the first glance we see that we have two different um, variables, A and Q, uh, and one equation, and also we have some kind of a um, uh, exponenter, uh, exponent, which we don't really you know, know n. But, fortunately for us, um, this is basically cancels out. Now, obviously we can divide everything by a, but we usually assume that the first member, the first term of uh, geome geometric sequence is not equal to zero, otherwise the sequence is trivial, zero, 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 zero. <coughs> And, uh, and that allows us to divide both sides of this equation by a. Uh, so a is not equal to 0. I can divide. And I have q n minus 1 equals to q to the nth minus q to the n minus 2. Now, also, another trivial case when q is equal to 0, we also have to exclude from our geometric regression this is kind of a typical condition. Whenever you have a problem with geometric uh, sequence, um, it, it's reasonable to assume that the first element and the quotient are not equal to zero, to basically exclude all the trivial kinds. Now, this is obviously reducible. If you divide both uh, sides of this equation by q to the n minus second degree, you will have uh, now whenever you define whenever you divide you subtract the exponents right so you have q n minus one minus n minus two will be the first degree uh, n minus n minus two it will be the second degree right n minus n plus two and here it would be just one well now this is an equation which we can solve for Q, and that's exactly what's required. The problem is, what's the Q, if this property is uh, satisfied? So, 
All we have to do right now is to solve this uh, simple quadratic equation which I will do very simply. It's q squared minus q minus 1 equals to 0 which means the solutions are 1 plus minus square root of 1 plus 4 which is 1 plus minus square root of 5 divided by 2. So this is the quotient. There are two different solutions. So any geometric sequence with any not equal to 0 first term. And this or that quotient will have this particular uh, property. That's it. Now, next problem <coughs> is following. Sequence consists of four elements. Find these elements if it's known that element 1, 2, and 3 form geometric progression, 2, 3, and 4 arithmetic progression, and sum of the first and four 14 and the second 12. Okay, so we have four elements, number 1, number 2, number 3, and number 4, which form some kind of a sequence. Now, I'm not telling it's arithmetic sequence or geometric sequence, it's just a sequence, which means it's ordered set of four real numbers. Now, what's known about this? Few things. These first three form geometric progression. Now, next three, I mean, starting from two to, to, to four, number two, number three, number four, form arithmetic progression. And I also know that number one plus number four is equal to 14, and number two plus number three is equal to 12. Okay, so these are conditions which are supposed to allow me to basically determine these four numbers. Well, how can I approach this? Well, I believe that the first thing is to find out what exactly are unknown variables from which these four um, numbers depend upon using these properties. And then, using these two conditions, try to solve certain equations to find these unknown variables. So, my first uh, unknown variable would be the first term of this sequence, first element. So, x is number 1. Now, I know that the first three uh, form geometric progression. Now, geometric progression is defined by the first term, which is x, the first member, and the quotient. So let's just assume that the quotient is just another variable which uh, should be introduced. So number 2 is equal to x times q, and number 3 would be x times q squared, right? That's what actually makes the first three um, elements of my sequence a geometric progression. Okay, fine. Now, <clears throat> so I have expressed 1, 2, and 3 using two variables, x, which is the number 1, and q, which is the quotient, the ratio between number 2 and number 1, or number 3 and number 2, which are the same. Now, I have to use the fact that this is arithmetic progression, number 2, number 3, and number 4. Now, what's the characteristic of arithmetic progression? that every next member is, by certain difference, whatever the letter you can use, D for instance I used before, is greater than or less than the previous one. So you have to add this difference to each uh, element to get to the next. Now, but I already know number two and number three in terms of my two initial variables. So I know what's the difference between them. It's x q squared minus x q, right? Which means 
that exactly the same difference between these two. So if I want to find out what's my number four, I have to take number three and add the difference between number three, number four, and number two. Right? That's basically what it means uh, that minus the, the, our number two, number three, and number four numbers uh, make up an arithmetic progression. So to get to this number, I have to add as much as I had to add to get from this to this. So to number three, I add the difference between three and, uh, and two. Now, in terms which I have already explained before, that would be, well, let me just write it down, x q square, that's number three, plus x q square minus x q. So that's my third, uh, actually fourth, sorry. That's my fourth member, x q. Actually, I can put two x q, right? Two x q square minus x q. Okay, these are my. Oh, actually, I don't need this. So, in terms of x and q, the first term of my sequence and um, the quotient between the first and the second, I have expressed all four numbers. Now, let's use the fact that we have the sum of the first and the fourth equal to 14. So, x plus 2x q squared minus x q is equal to 14, and the two middle one is equal to 12. This is a system of two equations with two variables, which I, in theory, can solve. So let's try to solve it, and whatever the results will be will allow us to recreate all four uh, unknown members of our sequence. All right, so how can we do it? Well, obviously I have to factor out x in the first case, and let me write it in this sequence. 2q squared minus q plus 1 is equal to 14, and the second one would be also x factor out All right. Now, um, again, we will exclude a case when x is equal to zero because uh, obviously this is not a solution because then you will have first three members equal to zero since it's a geometric progression and then therefore the force will be equal to zero and obviously the sum will be equal to 14 and 12. So x is not equal to zero, it's definitely and not, not a solution x not equal to 0, which means I can divide one into another, and what do I have? x would cancel out, right? So I will have this ratio, 2q squared minus q plus 1 over q squared plus q is equal to 14 over 12. Now here, I also have to be very careful when I'm dividing by q squared plus q. Now, q squared plus q should also not be equal to 0. Now, since q squared plus q is q times q plus 1, I have to say that q is not equal to 0, and q is not equal to minus 1. Now, again, all these cases, when q is equal to 0 and q is equal to plus or minus 1, are not considered to be um, usually the candidates for geometric progression. Well, uh, zero is obviously uh, is not good because that would give me all zeros, and um, and the minus one. Um, well, it, it's not really a, a good geometric progression if if uh, the quotient is equal to one or minus one because it's trivial. It either gives you the same numbers 
or gives you numbers which are changing the sign. And most likely will not get 14 and 12. I probably should check it more carefully, but with minus one. Um, let's just you know try to do it very simply. If you have some kind of an A, then you have minus A, then you have plus A, and then the difference between these two should be the fourth one, which is 2A. Mm, now, the middle will give you 0, definitely not 12. So, yes. So, I can basically check that minus 1 is not only trivial, but really not a solution anyway. Fine. Now, how can I solve this? Well, just make a cross product and let's just think what will happen. Uh, it looks like we will probably get some kind of quadratic equation which we just, you know, should solve. All right, let's do it. So it's this times this is equal to this times that. Now this is 24q squared minus 12q plus 12 equals 14q squared plus 14q. All right bringing everything to a normal form, quadratic equation, 10q square minus 12 and minus 14 would be minus 26q plus 12 equals 0. All right. Now we're in business. Now we have just the quadratic equation. First, we reduce by 2, so it's 5q squared minus 13q plus 6 is equal to 0, and solutions are double the first quotient, now the second plus minus square root of this guy square, it's 169, minus 4 times 5 times 6, that's 3120. These are two solutions. Well, let's simplify it a little bit. 169 minus 20 is 49. Square root is 7. So we have 13 plus minus 7 divided by 10, which is either 13 plus 7 is 20, divided by 10 is 2, or 6 tenths, or 3 fifths. So these are two <clears throat> solutions for Q. Two and three fifths. Okay. So we have the solution. Now we have to recreate our uh, members. All right. So First, we have to get the x, right? Now, um, from a simpler case, let's say some of these two is supposed to be equal to 12, and some of these two, 14. Well, 12 seems to be easier. So x times q squared plus q is equal to 12. Now, for q equals to 2, I have 2 squared, which is uh, 4 plus 2, 6. I have x is equal to 2, and for q is equal to 3 fifths, 3 fifths would be mm, 925 plus, plus 3 fifths, which is 1525, x equals 12, that's 24, so x 24, 20 fifths is equal to 12 x is equal to 25 divided by 2, am I right? Right. So, I have two different pairs of solution. Now, x equals 2, q equals 2, or x equals 25 fifths, and q is equal to 3 fifths. Now, 
in theory, we really have to do the checking. And obviously, I don't like to do the checking <laughs> for these guys. It's kind of complicated. So let me do the checking for x equals 2. So what my sequence will be? The first is x, which is 2. Then next two members are geometric progression with a q equals 2, which means 4 and 8. And the next one is uh, an arithmetic progression based on 4 and 8. So the difference is 4, so I have to add another 4 to get 12. So this is my sequence. Now let's check. Arithmetic prog uh, geometric progression, the first three, fine. Arith arithmetic progression, the next three, fine. Some of the first and the fourth is 14. Some of the middle ones are 12. Everything is fine. Whew, how about the, the second one? Well, yeah, well. Just to demonstrate that I'm in good spirit, I'll do that too. So, I have 25 fifths as the first one, and then I have geometric progression, which means next one would be multiplied by 3 fifths, which is, um, what did I say? Is it? No, I'm sorry. Is it 25 fifths? Well, let me just start in the beginning. x times q squared plus q was equal to 12. If q is 3 fifths, it's 9 1 2 fifths plus 3 fifths, which is 15 1 2 fifths. 12. So it's 24 20 fifths x equals to 12. Uh, yeah, it's 2. Oops, I see something is wrong. 25 over 2. All right, so let's check this out. The first is 25 second. Next, we multiply by 3, so it's 75. Uh, 3 fifths, uh, 10, right? Which is, let's just uh, reduce it by 5, would be 15 seconds. Next one, multiply by 3 fifths again, so it's 45 tenths. Again, reduced by 5, that's 9 second. Okay. Next, we will recreate our fourth member using uh, the fact that the difference between this and this should be the same as this and this. So, as you see, we are diminishing, going down. So, the difference is uh, minus 6 seconds. It's minus 3, actually. So I have to subtract 3 from this. So it would be 3 seconds. Is that right? This minus this is 6 seconds, which is 3. Right. Now, fine. Let's check this out. Now, these 3 are geometric. These 3 are arithmetic. We have checked that. Now. The sum of the first and the fourth one, 28 second, which is 14. Sum of these two is 24 second, which is 12. So as you see, we also have satisfied um, the, the conditions. Now, um, in theory, but let's be very, very careful about this. In theory, all our transformations were invariant. We have excluded a few cases when x is equal to 0 or q is equal to 0 or minus 1. And in the absence of these cases, everything else, whatever we did, we divided by something, we multiplied by something, but whatever we divided wasn't equal to 0, whenever we multiplied was not equal to 0, etc. So all our uh, transformations of our original equations were invariant, which means that ultimate solutions which we have for the very last equation, 
well, are supposed to basically satisfy the, the beginning as well, since all transformations are invariant. And that's why, in theory, we could avoid doing the checking. I mean, I'm not surprised that both solutions fit the problem. Um, however, I do encourage you in your you know, real kind of engagement, whatever you do, what kind of problems you solve, you do the checking. It's always a good thing to do the checking, regardless of how certain you are that transformations which you made with your equations are invariant. So we've got two solutions for our problem, and that concludes my lecture today. Um, do again these two problems yourself. And as usually, I encourage you to go to the unizor.com and um, register, make sure that you go through uh, enrollment, or your supervisor or your parents should enroll you, uh, and then you, then you go through exams. And it's supposed to be like a process. Education is a process. So don't, uh, don't avoid this type of things. It's for your own good. All right? Okay, thanks very much. That's it for today.